Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts, a special feature of Mid-Missouri Art News here at JCTV, Jefferson City, which is the capital of Missouri. I'm your host, Rick Jay, and I have a very special guest today I've been looking forward to so for the last six months, spending some time with sculptor Phil Jones of Jefferson City, Missouri. I would like to say welcome, Phil. I'm truly excited. To turn the spotlight on you today. Thank you, Jerry. It's good to see you again, as, as it always is. Thank you, sir. Well, we're starting out trying to identify a little bit uh, with Phil uh, Jones and um, telling us a little bit about you that best describes Phil. So I'll turn it over to you. Well, I am a uh, lifelong Jefferson City boy, and I'm proud to say that I'm from Jefferson City. Uh -huh. um, my folks live on Bel Air Drive. We moved there in 1968. Uh, they still live there. Dad will be 89 years old uh -huh. in uh, November. Uh, Mom will be 81 in February. Uh, so our roots run really deep here in Jefferson City. Yes. Uh, I think we grew up in kind of the golden age in the sweetest spot in the world here in Jefferson City. It is a sweet community. It, re it really is. I mean, I've, I had a paper out here in town, and right. my brothers and I both, all, th all three of us did it. And, you know, we used to uh, go leave 4 o'clock in the morning on Sunday mornings, go up to St. Joseph Cathedral and roll our papers, load them on our bikes, and go riding them. And then if it rained, Dad would take us out in the car, and we'd all throw them out the window. And, and it never occurred to us that we weren't safe. I see. I can identify and, uh, with that, yes. You know, my, my, uh, my paper route included Westmore Drive and the junior high principal, Yules Lawson, who lived on Westmore and let me park my bike and leave my paper bag there and walk over the hill and I'd go through a couple of season tickets at the Memorial Pool every year. Oh, excellent. So uh, growing up in Jefferson City has been an incredible thing. Graduated from Jefferson City High School in 1974. Uh, I'm a third generation alumni of Lincoln University here. Excellent. And uh, recently donated two of my busts to the, to the uh, library here. One of Barack Obama and one of Martin Luther King. Right. Uh, my grandpa got a degree here. My mother got a degree here and I got a degree here. Super. Uh, went on and got an MBA at uh, Regis University in Denver, Colorado. And, uh, I see. This is home. Excellent. Uh, now, uh, should we tell them, if they don't recognize Phil in, in this later model, should we divulge the nickname that we discussed a little bit? A lot of my friends call me Jones, Jonesy in high school. Uh, but anybody whose last name is Jones is liable to have that nickname. So. I see. Right. Uh, it was a good time. Yes, it sounds like it. I can remember those days uh, myself visiting in Jefferson City when I came to visit the cousins down around Iberia, Missouri, and uh, came to Jeff City uh, when the the uh, ice cream uh, uh, place. I remember. I can't think. Central Dairy. Central Dairy. Yes, yeah, Central Dairy. Do you do you remember the the popsicle trucks that used to go around? You'd hear that. Ding, 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 oh, ding. And everybody would run, run to their house and right. get, get a quarter from their mom and beg right. for a quarter. And I have to admit, go I, I drove one of those in the Kansas, South Kansas City area when I turned 16. So I can identify ringing the bell and the child walks up and asks you what you've got and you name off just about everything in the cart. And, and then they'll say, oh, I'll take one of those. Jefferson <laughs> City's a great place to call home and I, yeah. and I love it. Well, can you share with us when or how you were first inspired to become an artist? And uh, what has inspired you to continue on this venture? I have always loved art. I took every art class in the Jefferson City Public Schools. And when I was in high school, there were a lot of art classes. And I took every one of them. Uh, I enjoyed art in junior high. I enjoyed it in grade school. Uh, 
the art staff that we had back then was just second to none. Uh, Rick O'Neill, uh, J. Bob Estes, uh, Pat Jones. Pat Jones is, is the best teacher that I ever had, and she changed my life. Excellent. Uh, I had a ceramics class my junior year, and uh, everybody was making little pinch pot ashtrays and trying to hide that they were making paraphernalia and all that. And oh, I, see. I went and asked my mom for if I could take it, have an old styrofoam wig, a wig head. Oh. And I brought it in and I did a bust of it. And I did, did a self portrait. And of course the art teachers just thought that was great. I was the one art student there that was really taking it serious and enjoying yes. it. Uh -huh. And uh, Mrs. Jones sent it off to a, a contest, and I ended up getting a Hallmark gold key. And, Excellent. And uh, art has always been in my life. Yes. I can tell of. that your eyes just light up. When we talked six months ago, I can tell this gentleman just by his eyes lighting up when I brought up the word art. And, and that's the way generally you're going to recognize a, a co-lover of art. Like the Jefferson City Art Club, we do try to give the community uh, what we can for the love of art is our, the byline. So that, that's, that's great. Uh, can you share with us basically um, your first thought of uh, as a sculpture, uh, and do you enjoy other types of artwork at all? I have done a little bit of painting. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't work fast enough. On painting to do acrylics because it just dries too quickly, and I like to mix on the canvas. Uh -huh. So that just kind of precludes acrylics as a as a format for me. I could never control watercolors. I'd get water on the paper. I'd add color. I'd add another color, and I just had a puddle of brown. Oh, I see. So I've I've never done well at that. But my forte has always been three dimensional. So when you see a watercolor finished project, you can really identify with the work that it, it, it still amazes me that's why i stick to acrylics or oils watercolors and to come up with a, a great looking uh, uh landscape for example and the eye just puts it together for you it it still amazes me too i identify i can identify with that so now let's get down to sort of the nitty-gritty and and I'd like to ask you what um are your favorite meetings i'm sorry favorite mediums I know you surely work with different types of bronzes, maybe clays, uh, subject matter. In the second part of the program, we're going to ask Phil to describe and walk us through a project. So just to kind of give us an overview, what's your favorite mediums and subject matter when you're looking at uh, putting together a new project? I would say that I am a representationalist. I, I, uh, I see something and I try to duplicate it with my hands. Excellent. Uh, my favorite media is by far clay. Uh -huh. And uh, you, you mentioned br bronze and brass and things like that. There really aren't facilities to do, to do bronze in Jefferson City. That, inv and that involves a foundry and that involves making reverse molds, pouring waxes. Uh, wax replacement pouring and then welding them together and and mm -hmm. so that's something that if you're going to do you, you you have it you take to Kansas City or St. Louis you take your piece and then let them do oh that. I see yeah. now so how about uh, you mentioned clay how about uh, wood are you into carving at all uh, or the no. chainsaw doing a bear for the no, front really yard not. <laughs> okay. I, so, I do I do I don't, better with with fine, with fine, fine tools. And the feel of clay. Now, I've worked with clay somewhat in the past when I was younger, and I, I know there's a certain feel to clay that it just kind of, you touch it, it touches you, I guess you could say. It does, it does. So you, you, and then all of a sudden, you smooth out a certain area, and it just talks back to you and becomes what you was hoping it would, maybe. So well, that's great to know. Now, uh, Forever Friends, Forever give Friends us Custom idea? Patterns. That is, um, that's the business that I've gotten and got a patent on, on the, the custom patterns. And I'm sure that there will be some photographs that will be, that'll be coming yes. through. Mm -hmm. um, I actually have a studio at Fisher Body Shop, and that's where my kiln is. And Kurt and Devin are my partners, and we're trying to, uh, trying to 
take these nationwide through the through the major pet industries uh, outlets like Petco, uh, PetSmart, all of those. Uh, I uh, I owe Kurt and uh, and Devin a big thank you for actually supporting the arts and for for uh, for helping me out with this. Uh, what, what we like to do, I'm, I'm a big animal lover. Yes. As, as I know you are, I've seen yes. your boy many times. Um, to me, the world is a much better place because of our pets. And 60% of people now are having their pets cremated because people don't stay in the same house forever anymore. That's and they true. don't want to leave them in the yard. So what I do is I sculpt a portrait. They send me a picture, and I sculpt a portrait of their very pet. Right. Color it to where it looks as, as close to right. as them. So, and we're alive. going to the second uh, segment. Um, after the break, we'll get into more step-by-step -step procedure if you can. Absolutely. That. Be glad to. Uh, but uh, we definitely are considering uh, Phil doing my Doberman, uh, Grand Champion uh, Sir Von Riker. Um, Phil, your sculpture works are becoming really identifiable in the community and many people are talking about it. They've been so excited about you being on the program. And so um, I guess as they are growing in number, can you share with our viewers right now, are there any venues or art exhibits where your works may be viewed? Uh, I'm glad you asked that, Jerry. Yes, I, I did a list so I wouldn't miss anything okay. because I'm, we're interested and we're doing a lot of things to help the community out. Uh, I'm going to have uh, a table with a couple of urns at the Pet Blessing Saturday at a Westside Veterinary Clinic from 1 to 3 to help customers yes, who, are, so who are dealing with the loss of a pet mm -hmm. to be able to order and purchase a custom pet urn. So that's Saturday, and give that address or... October 7th. Uh, it's Saturday at Westside Animal Hospital, Westside. Okay. which is is right out the outer road uh, off of Highway 50 West there. And you're inviting everyone to come and, and take a look. Any pet animal, any so animal lover ought to be out if there. If you love your animal and uh, the ashes, uh, we'll maintain them and have, a, have your pet with the rest of your life uh, uh, on hand. You can also go to the Page Library, a bust of, okay. I donated a bust of Barack Obama and uh, Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. that are in the library here at the, at the university. So we're not only talking animals, we're talking about family, friends. Absolutely. I do, I do uh, shoulder busts, 17-inch busts. I do 14-inch uh, heads of, of people, like, right. like a neck and heads. And some of the photos will depict here Absolutely. Uh, as, you, as we're and, talking. Uh, actually, I, my oldest son passed away in February, and I did a funeral. Memory, memorial piece for him, and yes. that will be in one of the and pictures. That, that as well is a beautiful too. piece in the memory, and that's one of the first thing you shared with me personally. It touched my heart, and I still like to carry that photo with me. On now, let me phone. get these these all so, out there. Uh, West side. I always have artwork at Capital Arts. I support Capital Arts and the work that Lee Amparello and those people do down there. They're great for yes. the art community in Jefferson City. Uh, we are donating a piece. I will sculpt a human being or a pet of your choosing. It, it's going to be auctioned off at the Tom Henke Golf Classic uh, October the 8th, and that's at the Furley YMCA. And I understand Charlie Pride's going to be there. Oh, excellent. Uh, now, also, uh, the, you're the, offering a uh, chance uh, at a drawing for uh, uh, one person to name be drawn and be sculpted uh, Absolutely. Well, choice? they'll bid on it. Oh, they're bid. And, and the oh. proceeds will go to the Special Learning Center, which oh. Debbie Handler runs, and she's a, a lifelong friend of mine. Excellent. And I always do it. And Kurt, Kurt and Devin do a lot, too, to support uh, the uh, uh, Special Learning Center. Kurt and Devin, yes. So okay. that's, that's uh, October the 8th at the Furley YMCA. And then, of course, the annual uh, big fundraiser for Capital Arts is Celeb RT. This year, I am both a celebrity and an artist because mm -hmm. trying to get somebody to go along with me and do a sculpture was a pretty big deal. So we're gonna um, we're gonna also have one auctioned off a pet urn or something like that. Oh, excellent! And the proceeds will go to the Capital Arts. And then I'm in the Boone County Art Show. My Michael Jordan piece oh, is my. in the Boone County Art Show, October 13th and 14th, and that's at the Central Bank in Boone County in uh, Columbia. And then um, 
In next summer, moving forward in August of 2018, I will be an artist in residence at the uh, Missouri 50 and Missouri um, Art Show in the Missouri in the Missouri Fair. So those oh, are some of the things that I've got coming you've up. You've got right quite a, a quite an itinerary, I would say. Also, I have done a, a, a Stan Lee slash Marvel characters uh, tribute uh, series that we'll be taking to uh, uh, Comic Con in uh, in February. So that, once again, there's some pictures. Sure. A picture of that in the okay, agree. In, in the picture. So uh, I hope you, uh, everyone, got those dates and some time, and we'll give you um, an, e um, an email, possibly, and a website uh, soon. Uh, Phil, we must take a break, so hang on with me just for a minute or two. After the break, we learn more about Mid Missouri sculpture, and where we learn about the total process of completing a fine piece of sculpture from. Uh, Mr. Phil Jones. We'll be right back. Welcome back everyone, I'm Rick Jay, your host here on Spotlight on the Arts, JCTV, with a special guest, the sculptor in our neighborhood, Phil Jones, and uh, we'll be identifying more uh, about what it takes to be a sculptor, uh, from a project at the beginning to the end. So uh, he's here today uh, to give us the scoop and all the interesting facts on that sculpting. Phil, you've shared so much before the break, and now I'd like to ask you to try to answer a couple of questions that our viewers uh, have asked me to approach you about. The first one is, uh, how do you arrive at a project idea? Oh, wow. Generally, uh, well, uh, commissions. Commissions? Commissions are one way. Uh -huh. uh, a lot of them are things that I want to do to try a new technique. I recently did a very large piece. Uh, Game of Thrones is a television series that's really, really big now. Yes. I think I read somewhere in 197 countries it's the number one television series. Wow. And uh, there's a character on there called Daenerys Targaryen. She's the mother of dragons. And she wears her hair in braids that come back and are, are layered and come together and flow down. And I thought, wouldn't it be interesting to try to sculpt that out of clay? So I did that just to challenge my skills, and that's a cool piece. And we'll take that to Comic-Con as well. Um, a, lot of, a lot of friends, Kurt and Devin, have, have, uh, have suggested pieces. And uh, I'll try anything. My, my wife sometimes laughs when something will break off or something. She'll, oh, no, what are you going to do? And I say, honey, it's just clay. It's, just it's a very organized pile of dirt. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yes. Well, I, I know uh, just to uh, get an idea of something, it just, it just comes to you. It, just kinda, it so, sort of triggers your senses, I guess. So I can identify that with that, and I believe our, our viewers can too. Well, now, can you... How in-depth do you want me to go on my process? Well... You get the idea, and then the process. Can you step through us, uh, ba the basic steps? Um, okay, I have built armatures for heads, armatures for full shoulders, and then armatures for a long-nosed dog, and for a short-nosed dog, and then an armature for a cat. And they ha they're built on an armature because you cannot f fire a solid piece of clay that big. Oh, I see. A for weight, B, gases, 
build up as it as as the clay vitrifies when it fires, and it has to have a way to get out. So you want to keep the wall of that piece no more than a half inch thick anywhere. Uh -huh. So I build it on an armature. Mm -hmm. And people ask me all the time, how much time do you have in that? Well, it's not a straight line process. I see. You, you start out by putting really wet clay on the armature and you rough everything in. Then uh -huh. you have to walk away from it to tw for 12 to 18 hours, depending on the ambient humidity, depending on airflow and things like that. Then you come in with wood tools and sharpen the details. Then you walk away from it for another row, probably 12 hours come in with sharper tools, then you have to cut it in half over the top, pull it off the armature, take a big loop tool, and while you have your hand on the other side and can feel the depth, you have to hollow it out, then score it together, put slip on it, work it back together to where it's finally freestanding. I see. Then you come in with the sharp tools and get all that really fine detail, and then to get the little nuances, shadows, yeah. uh, bone structures, fine facial lines, uh, sandpaper, uh, then start with like a number three uh, steel wool, then graduating to a, a single aught steel wool, and then going to a four aught steel wool to get it firing ready as greenware. That's just to get it firing ready. Awesome. And then, you know, then it takes 24, 24 hours to fire, 12 hours to candle, which is a uh, pottery slash clay person's term that. that Basically, is you run the temperature up to 185 and hold it there for 12 hours, and you've got a downdraft circulation going through the kiln, small cir circulation that pulls that moisture out so uh -huh. that the steam escapes before it boils because if that water remains in there and boils, the piece fractures during the firing. Oh so then you take it up to, to I, I fired about an 08 cone, cone setting, I see. which takes it up to about 1741 degrees, and then it just naturally cools. Very so interesting. So then it's cold, it's cold, cold finished. Cold I paint finished. them with acrylic paint after I seal them, and then uh, over spray with either satin or high gloss polyurethane to give it durability with a UV protective to protect the coloring. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of, in a nutshell, a very quick synopsis of my process. Very good, very awesome. And, uh, very interesting. Now we have, generally have a, a picture of what happens, and it doesn't sound like it's an easy process. But um, what we can do, mm -hmm. what we know how to do, what our hands are able to do, and our eyes are able to, seems easy to us. It doesn't seem hard for me. Excellent. It because I know how to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, I wish I would have picked up much earlier in life that. What I had was a talent that so few people are able to do. I did Excellent. not realize that. There's not very many that you run across. About. I have not run across uh, any You're sculpture. the first in the, this type of sculpture work, especially the, with the animals and uh, what have you. Now, well, that speaking of different pieces, uh, everyone has their favorite pieces of work. I know I do, and they, I call some of my favorites. Sometimes I surprise myself. Even sometimes we were surprised at you know, on the completion. So can you identify and share with us maybe those favorites and why they have become a favorite um, with you and maybe will become a favorite with our viewers? One of, one of the photographs that you'll see in this episode is one of a chocolate lab with a pink, with a pink collar and her tags. Oh. That's my dove. That's your dove. Dove is my chocolate Labrador retriever and She'll be five years old, 27th of October, and she is my very best friend. Yes. And uh, that piece, when I see that, I see the love in her eyes, and to me, that says that I was successful with that. Yes, I guess it would be in the eyes, for sure. Well, Phil, um, so the projects now, do you have any on the table? Oh, I'm, I'm just finishing. I was just in Art in the Park in St. Louis uh, two weeks ago and got a commission from, um, from a couple of their dog that passed away. And I've got him. I'll, when I leave here, I'll go take him out of the kiln and finish him. I've got the label that goes on the base. And I've got to insert the canopic jar so that it's an urn. And, oh, I see. and then uh, I'll get that to them. And then I've got uh, a couple, three more commissions that I'm, I'll be starting on this afternoon. So Sounds like definitely a busy individual. It's just not like so much fun too. Um, well, you're active with uh, presentations of your work. So you share it with our viewers where they may view, well, we talked about some 
uh, places that they're uh, being um, for view. So I guess we've covered that all. Well, already. actually, um, I did want to did want to bring up that uh, first time on Mid Missouri Art News uh, Spotlight on the Arts that we will be uh, have put together a presentation uh, at the Run Center here, the Run Conservation Nature Center. And all of my guests in the past months and the future months will be putting together an ex exhibition at the Run Center here in Jefferson City in the months of May and June. And uh, Phil will be one of those uh, guests uh, included in that presentation. That'll run for two months, going to the Run Center, and that'll be all nature or conservation based. So it's interesting what Phil might come up with between now and that time. You, if you, are you going to surprise me or have you, just, have you got an idea? Well, I, a lot of times I surprise myself. I, I'll sit down and I, I'll just, huh. And then I'll look at it and I go, I'm not sure if I like that. And then I move through it a little further and the process is kind of interesting. A lot of times I'll walk away from it and sneak a look at it around the corner after I've looked away from it. it it's kind of fun to do. Well, I'd suggest to a bull, big bullfrog or something on a pedestal, which we'll provide. A bullfrog named Jeremiah. Uh, Jeremiah the bullfrog, <laughs> that would be interesting. Well, Phil, um, I want to thank you so much for contributing to Spotlight on the Arts. It's been a really inspiring visit with you. Would you like to leave with the, the uh, viewers your website address, telephone number, or email address where viewers may follow up with any questions? and uh, at least view your website for more details. Uh, we don't have, we have a website. We do have a, f a Facebook page, and it's FUR, F-U-R, E-V-E-R, Friends Custom Patterns, LLC. And uh, I have a, a Phil Jones sculpture page on Facebook. Uh, I'm easy to reach. Uh, my, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an easy guy to get a hold of. Excellent. Especially if you go to the website, you'll have a contact uh, bullet there, most Absolutely. likely. Well, thanks again, Phil. I'm going to fill the viewers in on some other news. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for your kindness and what you do for the art, arts community. Well, thank you, sir. I, I sure enjoy it also. Well, that's uh, the Jefferson City Art Club really uh, is active at this time. First meeting was in September. We're looking at a second meeting, October 16th coming up really soon so we were invited the meeting starts at about 5 15 5 30 where we gather for show and tell and visit and at sharp at, sharply at six o'clock we have a presenter and uh, some artists uh, that'll be live on the spot to entertain you uh, so we hope to, you'll come on out and if, if you love art you don't have to be a member we'd love to do have you think about it. So come on out and, uh, and join us. Now next here on Spotlight on the Arts, I'll be interviewing Lincoln University's own Dr. Brian Sammons, who will share with us the happenings at Lincoln U and how the university fulfills a role in the community of Jefferson City at the university and, and for Mid-Missouri Art News. If it wasn't for Lincoln University, this show wouldn't exist the volunteers and the time they put together to bring the show forward. Uh, I have to thank them and uh, we sure appreciate that. This is all derived from the performing art productions, naturally. Arts uh, by hand, how to teach English, journalism, departments are preparing students for the future rules in the vast communities of mid-Missouri and the United States, maybe the world. That program is scheduled for taping on October 11th, a week from today. So look forward to YouTube and the uh, local JCTV stations when it's there shortly thereafter. On October 22nd, I'll be active in a field shooting uh, for Quilts of Valor. We uh, all agree that quilts are another piece uh, of art and they have so much meaning. Well, the Quilts of Valor will be presenting uh, honored military veterans who have served in one capacity or another over the past year with a handmade quilt. Uh, quilt being a beautiful item of handmade art, as I uh, like to share with you. 
So look for that taping, um, that show. that will be aired soon. My next featured guest here on Mid-Missouri Art News are artist Gail Levion of Jefferson City and Ron Ferkel of Washington, Missouri. That program is scheduled to tape on November 8th, 2017. Thank you, JCTV producer Gloria and Lowe. Without you, it wouldn't be possible. And the camera crew. And thank you, our viewers, for joining us. Look for more Spotlight on the Arts right here on JCTV and YouTube. I'm Rick J. Singh. See you next time. <laughs>